Credit Suisse has reported its biggest annual loss since the 2008 financial crisis and is warning of a further substantial hit to come. Switzerland's second largest bank fell into the red by more than expected in the fourth quarter of last year. And that contributed to a second straight year of losses, totaling $8 billion in 2022. Well, Francis Coppola is an independent banking analyst. Uh, good to have you back on the programme, Francis. So uh, we're seeing biggest losses since the 2008 financial crisis for Credit Suisse. What's behind it? It's fair to say they had a very bad fourth quarter. It wouldn't have been as bad if it hadn't been for that. And so we have to remember that uh, part of the problem with fourth quarter was this uh, ridiculous rumour mill that got, in, got going when um, some, somebody tweeted about uh, an investment bank teetering on the brink and then um, an ill-advised um, uh, communication from Credit Suisse itself um, added fuel to the flames. Um, and they suffered massive outflows, um, not just in their investment banking, which is fair, which is fair to say has had a pretty bad year, but also in their core wealth management and Swiss banking and uh, uh, franchises. It, it's it's not been good. So uh, a pretty bad year, as you call it. Then uh, the bank does have a new boss, though, tasked with overhauling the business. Uh, it's a pretty big task, isn't it? It is. Um, I mean, we are going to see very large cuts. Uh, the investment bank um, particularly is in for a complete restructure. Um, it, you know, to, it's even going to be given a new name and a new leader, and they've bought um, a boutique advisory service to see if they can turn it into something a bit different from a conventional um, investment bank. Um, we'll have to see how that goes. We are looking at very large job losses. Around 9,000 people are going to lose their jobs, um, which is maybe about a sixth of their workforce. So, you know, it is a sizable um, pain, amount of pain that we're looking at. And part of this restructuring that you've talked about is uh, actually spinning off the investment bank division. And for a company that's made its name as an investment bank, uh, isn't that quite a big risk? Well, it's interesting you say a company that's made its name as an investment bank, but we should remember that um, Credit Suisse is a Swiss bank. And Swiss banks really are known for um, you know, uh, private banking, um, wealth management services, asset management, um, and, and all of it you know, sort of secure and anonymous and uh, with privacy respected, rather than the kind of freewheeling American-style investment banking, which is what Credit Suisse got itself into, and where it's now making very large losses. So what it's planning to do is spin off its investment bank um, under an old name, um, the name of First Boston, um, which again it harks back to it, to the American roots of its investment bank, and we'll have to see how that goes. But in, in theory, you know, the, it, it's, it's a Credit Suisse turning back to its roots and saying we're going to concentrate on wealth management and Swiss banking might not be that bad a strategy. So you, you, you mentioned the rumor mill uh, effects that, that happened uh, last year, and that comes on top of what was really a series of scandals for the bank. Can it come back from this and restore credibility? It's fair to say the brand has been pretty badly damaged. I mean, although I've mentioned the rumour mill, it is fair to say that um, the rumour mill would not have um, gathered traction in the way it did if um, Credit Suisse hadn't um, gone through this series of, of bad losses and scandals before that, you know, losing so much on Greensill and then um, getting mixed up with, with Bill Huang's outfit and, and the rest of that. Um, you know, that is a large part of its problems. It's, uh, and I think it, because of that, it, it's perceived as having a little bit of a culture problem. It's, it's, it's got its finger into too many dodgy pies, really, and it needs to have a good look at its risk management and, you know, its way of judging the, the quality of investments, really. OK, Francis, good to talk to you. Thank you for joining us. That's independent banking analyst Francis Coppola.